Shalom everybody, I'm Rolene Marks. This is the Israel Brief where you come for your headlines every Monday to Thursday, brought to you by Lay of the Land. And just a reminder, you can check out our website at www.layoftheland.online. Our Facebook community is at Lottle site. We are growing. We would love you to be a part of it by liking us or following us. Our YouTube channel is at The Israel Brief. And if you are watching us there, please consider hitting that red subscribe button so we can get as much exposure as possible. And we're on Twitter at Lay of the Land 5. But let's get on with today's top stories. And a 28-year-old male is in serious condition in hospital following another terrorist attack earlier today. This time, the terror attack took place at the Gush Etzion Junction on a bus. An Arab-Israeli man is alleged to have stabbed the young Israeli in the neck with a screwdriver. Now, the bus driver, who comes from East Jerusalem, Mohammed Saeed, noticed the commotion on the bus, managed to stop the bus and get the passengers off. However, the terrorist was neutralized by a fellow passenger who was armed. The bus Bus driver is at Shire Tzedek being treated for anxiety and is reported to have told his father, I never thought I would be part of an event like this. We wish a speedy recovery for the victim of the terror attack and also hail the bus driver for helping to prevent what could have been a greater disaster. Following today's terror attack, which is the fourth in the the um, space of just over a week, IDF troops raided the home of the uh, terrorist in the West Bank city of Jenin. Now, clashes broke out between IDF troops and Palestinians, and two Palestinians were killed in an exchange of gunfire. Hamas has threatened escalation will be met with escalation. Now, last night in uh, speaking to the media, Prime Minister Bennett has appealed to any Israelis who, who are licensed to carry firearms, please to do so. Defence Minister Benny Gantz addressing a press conference said that he will flood the street with thousands of reservists if that is needed to keep the calm. And President Biden phoned Prime Minister Bennett last night expressing his condolences and reiterating that the United States will stand with Israel no matter the threat. Now, as we speak, the victim of the B'nai Brak shooting, the Arab-Israeli officer who tried to uh, take out the terrorist Amir Khoury, who was uh, killed in the exchange of fire, is being laid to rest. What is particularly moving is that a delegation of ultra-Orthodox from B'nai Brak are on board a bus with the words, Amir Khoury, Gibor Yisrael, Amir Khoury, hero of Israel, to go up to the Northern Galilee to pay their respects and to attend the funeral of the 32-year-old officer who was slain. Our thoughts and prayers are with all the families of all the victims affected in the terror attacks that have claimed 11 lives over the past week. In other news, Deborah Lipstadt, the Holocaust historian, has finally, after eight months of delay, been confirmed as the anti-Semitism envoy in the United States. Now, yesterday, the United States Senate approved the nomination, and uh, just a day later, this was approved. Now, the reason for the delay is that Lipstadt is alleged to have criticized several conservative lawmakers, and there were some Republicans who delayed the process because of this. However, the famed historian uh, is now confirmed and will hopefully get into the important job of helping to deal with rising anti-Semitism in the United States. But uh, on more positive news, the foreign minister from Turkey has confirmed that he will be visiting Israel in May. This uh, will be to discuss the exchanging of ambassadors with his counterpart, Yair Lapid, who is our foreign minister.
Both countries recalled their ambassadors because of recent tensions. However, over the last couple of months, we've seen a significant warming of ties between Israel and Turkey, with Turkey doing something very unusual, which is condemning the B'nai B'raq terror attack. Our President uh, Isaac Herzog recently visited Turkey on a historic mission. And uh, there have been rumors that our Prime Minister, Naftali Bennett, could also pay a visit to the country. So ties really are warming up and this is a very, very welcome development in our region. And speaking of welcome developments, the Israeli ambassador to Azerbaijan, George Dick, who uh, just if you are counting, happens to be an uh, Arab Israeli, tweeted out today that a memorandum of cooperation in the field of tourism has been signed between the two countries and that Azerbaijan will be opening up a tourism office here in Israel, increasing cooperation in the field of tourism. Now, some of you might be wondering uh, what kind of tourism is Abidjan famous for? Well, there is the Baku Formula One race and uh, there are many F1 fans here in Israel and now would be a great opportunity to pop over to Azerbaijan and enjoy it for yourselves. Now, this brings us to the end of our broadcasts for the week. It has been a, a very difficult week for us in Israel, a very tiring one. I'm sure you can hear by my voice. Uh, it has been an exhausting week. And many of you are asking us if we're okay. Thank you for that. Uh, Israelis are, are okay. We're resolute. We're resilient. Yes, this does hurt us. Uh, it makes us worried and on edge and vigilant. But we have endured this before. We have uh, defeated it before and we will again. But thank you to so many of you for your incredible good wishes and concern for our safety. It is so appreciated. And all that remains is for me to wish you a wonderful, a safe, a healthy weekend from all of us to all of you. Shabbat Shalom. I'll see you on Monday with your top stories. Thank you for watching. I'm Rolene Marks with the Israel Brief.